Michael Killen. I'm host of the Killen Report. And I think today almost every scientist in the world agrees that climate change is not only real, it is threatening, it's getting more threatening every day, and many of them are now forecasting that it is a threat to our civilization. Nothing lives forever. I have invited Alex Canera. He is a PhD, I think in several different fields, to come on this program and help discuss one possible solution to climate change, but it is one that is full of negatives. I want to ask him about several of these negatives. Scientists around the world are now promoting nuclear energy. Alex, Dr. Canara, it is Thank always you. good to see you. Same here. Tell me, what is the, was the greatest nuclear disaster in history? The greatest nuclear disaster was probably the misinterpretation of what Chernobyl did. That's probably the disaster that we need to think about. Because Chernobyl event was not only something that scared people around the world and killed people in Ukraine, it kind of set the stage for uh, an adverse propaganda uh, effort against nuclear power. And the reason I say that is simply because Chernobyl was a factory for making plutonium for Russian weapons. Yes. It was not a nuclear power plant as its primary purpose. And it was illegal everywhere in the world where regulated nuclear power exists. And so regulated nuclear power around the world is the safest form of energy, okay. safer than even solar panels. But Chernobyl was used as an example right. of nuclear power when it shouldn't have been. Okay, so the Russians wanted to build this in the Ukraine, right? Yes, they this have several. A... They still operate several of that particular type of reactor. Oh, okay, and, and we know Russian technology is not necessarily anywhere near what we produce or the Europeans. I mean, we are concerned with regulations, requirements, safety, et cetera. Back then, and maybe still today, are the Russians that way? No, I think the Russian, uh, okay, so because of the government, uh, the government determines what happens in most countries, even with technology. And so the Russian technology for nuclear was always quite good. It's just that the government in particular wanted to achieve certain propaganda purposes and some weapons purposes with nuclear power plants like the one at Chernobyl. There are still three that are What operating. did they do wrong with Chernobyl? What Chernobyl, they hid the result of a mistake initially, which caused people around the plant to be hurt by radiation that they could easily have been saved from. And what was that, that mistake? And that mistake was that the plant was designed in such a way that if you operated it at very low power, where the reactor is not generating as much steam, and you're almost shutting down the turbine drive to the generators, that it was effectively unstable. And so one experiment that they were running at the time of the accident was simply to see how low they could go would the turbines keep spinning the generator even if the plant was not making any real steam? And how long could they operate their equipment and so forth with the turbine spinning at such a uh, un unforced rate? And so it was an interesting experiment, but it was done in a way that was frankly dangerous. And they knew that it would be dangerous because a physicist had explained why they should not have used the structure of the control rods in the plant, which slows down the reaction the way they were operating it. And someone without much training 
in the staff at the time, hit the button that okay. says turn off the reactor, and unfortunately that created the explosion because the control rod design was dangerous. Okay, so we learned from Chernobyl. Everybody learned from Chernobyl, yes, and the physicist who warned repeatedly that the design of the control rod system was faulty committed suicide afterward because he felt he had not worked hard enough with the administration from the Russian side to correct the physical design of the reactor. Okay. So a lot of people got hurt. And Chernobyl now is a thriving community, am I correct? Uh, as a tourist as site, tourist that's site. for sure. <laughs> okay, but we've learned a lot. What was the most important nuclear energy accident <clears throat> in the United States? Uh, probably the, one of the first ones was uh, at Fermi uh, in Detroit. Fermi was a, one of the first fast neutron reactors which uh, used plutonium for fuel. It had a very small core, uh, physically small, because the energy density of nuclear power is very high, so you don't need very much material to make a lot of power. And uh, it was asked to perform an experiment, effectively a loss of cooling experiment, by the current head of the Atomic Energy Commission. And they performed the experiment, but the way the experiment had been constructed inside the reactor was some welder had not welded something as well as he should have, and a plate of steel blocked more cooling than it was supposed to. The reactor got overheated, and a part of the core, which is not very big, melted and fell to the bottom of the reactor. The unfortunate thing was it could have been repaired and the reactor rerun, uh, but the Atomic Energy Co Commission head at the time was a former Navy reactor fellow who loved water-cooled reactors and not so much sodium-cooled reactors, and he refused to allow the repairs to be made to Fermi. So that was a disaster that hurt no one, yeah. but hurt the clean image. energy. The <laughs> e energy, yeah, clean energy. Right. So we've learned something from Chernobyl. We've learned something from Fermi, and it's near Detroit. Is it still operating, or has it? It could have been, but it, it, it has not been. No. Yeah. And let's go to Three Mile Island back, now. Yeah. This is one, besides Chernobyl, I heard about. Three Mile Island seems to be seared in a lot of our consciousness mm -hmm. of other people in the United States. It's in my mind like 100,000 people were fried or killed. How many were really killed at this uh, place? Actually, you know that. Actually, no one. No one. Uh, this is the reactor down here, and these are the cooling towers for it, which obviously are not operating now and have not been ever since the, the event. The interesting thing about <clears throat> Three Mile Island is that it had saved thousands of lives afterward. And the reason it did was because the investigation of the accident showed that the control room and the training of the operators in the control room had missed a certain funny little design issue. And so the reactor was allowed to overheat. It didn't completely meltdown, was allowed to overheat by accident effectively and by the design of the control room and, and the training that the staff got. So what happened was after Three Mile Island, a group called World Association of Nuclear Operators and International Nuclear Power Operators formed and in utilities that used to be separate from each other and not talking to each other started sharing training and safety uh, safety planning and so forth with each other, which would be commonsensical anyway. And so after Three Mile Island, the output from nuclear plants in the United States went up from about 65% of the time availability being online to 90%, which is what it is today. So you think of all the coal emissions that were eliminated, not by building any new reactors, but simply by running them 90% of the time instead of 65% of the time in the northeastern United States. So lives were saved in the thousands because of Three Mile Island and no one was hurt. Why do people still think of Three Mile Island? 
You're the first person I have ever heard in the context of discussing it, yeah. talking about how lives were saved because we don't have to, right. we didn't burn so much coal. Why is this seared in our minds? Uh, I, I really don't know. I, I was with my parents on, on uh, vacation from uh, Stanford Graduate School and a uh, month before, and we watched the China Syndrome on the local movie theater. Yeah. And, uh, and, and then Three Mile Island happened, and everybody seemed to, oh my God, it's just like the movie, you know, just it's like really terrible. And, <clears throat> and Jane yet, Fonda, right? And Jane Fonda and her, her dad. Yeah. So, so it's, it would be humorous, except that what it has done is what we're kind of accustomed to today. Social media has deprived us of facts in many re respects. So we didn't get the facts about okay. Fremont Island. And one of the most absurd things that happened at the time was that an AP reporter okay. wrote up an article, right. people read it, Good. and the way the AP reporter explained the hydrogen bubble in the containment, which is what the containment's supposed to do, supposed to contain everything that could come out of the reactor. He wrote in words that suggested to people who weren't experts that there was a hydrogen bomb in the plant. <laughs> really? And people started getting in their cars and racing out of town. Now, luckily, no one was killed because of that. Yeah. But this is an example of why we must not accept ignorance that's okay. propagated by any, any form, media of any form, whether it's social media, print media, TV media, and so forth. We really have to take the responsibility to get for educated. ourselves to study things. All right, so when we think of nuclear energy, and let's say disasters in Three Mile Islands, we should recognize no one got killed. No there one got no hurt. There was no big yeah. explosion. Right. And people didn't get cancer 10 years right, after. Right, right. It's a non-issue. Would that be? That's true. I mean, there, is, uh, there was one, I think, uh, doctor who claimed that later that people were going to get leukemia. But uh, none of his, his statements were found to be true by professionals who investigated. Fukushima. Fukushima. So Fukushima was predicted to fail as it did before it was built. And the reason was this region here where the reactors were built yes. used to be 25 meters higher than and the ocean. Really? And they changed that? They brought it down? In order to TEPCO, in order to save money, uh, and the government's regulator at the time, which has been, was, was destroyed, I mean, the, the regulator was dismissed after the accident. They allowed Fukushima, uh, Fukushima to be, have 25 meters of natural elevation removed before the construction began. So as a result, the plant was at sea level, essentially. Isn't that cra I, I'm, I'm crazy? I'm crazy. I wouldn't build That's my crazy. house at sea level. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. And they built it. When did they build this? Well, this is an old, very old plant, and, and the reactors that were damaged were scheduled for removal and, and rebuild uh, anyway. They're old General Electric boiling water reactors, which are fine. But the point is that the, the cooling system, which you need if the uh, reactors are shut down, uh, was made vulnerable by being built at sea level. So when the tsunami came in, Flooded the generators. That's the end of the plant. Flooded the generators. The, gener the emergency water pumping right. generators. And system. they were also at sea level, right? Yeah. What they if they were, were, well, they were below sea level? What if they were as high as the the uh, auxiliary pumps at, for ex for example, at Diablo Canyon? Yeah. Well, well, those are eighty feet up. Yeah, that's uh, fine. Yeah. But this reactor number six here, these were the ones that failed. This one was higher and was fine. It wasn't operating at the time, but there was no problem with its emergency cooling or anything of that sort. Okay, so when the tsunami hit, and so now, this is a problem with construction. 
okay? Building it at sea level. You and know? not making the seawall as high as they were told to make it high. Uh, so, see, the interesting thing about Japan, having worked for a Japanese company myself, is that the government and industry typically work together at the highest management levels. And so the regulator was in between, but TEPCO is one of the largest corporations in Japan, if not the largest. So its influence with the government is very high. Oh, yes. So the regulator couldn't actually get the plant, even if it wanted to, to be built in any way that TEPCO management didn't want to build it. Okay, so today, we don't build nuclear energy plants or, or probably any kind of important plant at sea level rise. Would, would this, would well, that no, be? you would not. You, I mean, if you're worried about sea rise, you certainly don't build anything, even a McDonald's. Yeah. And <laughs> this is a little bit of the damage that occurred at Fukushima. And you're saying here absolutely none of this was caused by the nuclear power plant. This right. was caused by a tsunami. Actually, what it's caused by, uh, apart from the ships being thrown inland by the tsunami, the deaths, at, did the deaths at the event of the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami were caused by the Japanese government. That may sound like a, an inflammatory statement, but the region, all around the region, are monuments with Japanese carvings on mm. them that say, do not build from here to the sea. <laughs> because tsunamis occur cool. in the region every 150 years or so. So their ancestors warned people not to build their homes or businesses from the tsunami memorial stone, as they're called, to the sea. And yet, look what you've got. The government had no uh. land use policy that would protect the people. They killed about 16,000 people be simply because of the land use policy in the Sendai region. 1,600. 16,000. 16,000 people. And when we think of Fukushima, that 16,000 is sort of mixed in now with the nuclear power plant disaster. But, but the plant didn't do it. No, the plant killed no one. The government and an earthquake <clears throat> right. and a tsunami. Right. And, and the government, right. And the Japanese government had a, an evacuation policy after the nuclear plant explosion uh, that actually forced people to leave that didn't need to leave. And mm -hmm. that killed another about a thousand people because they were elderly and so forth who were taken from hospitals and, and had to sure. have life support and so forth. A lot of people died simply because of an evacuation that wasn't necessary. So here's some more disaster. And again, this... <laughs> this is really good. Yeah, like yeah. It's terrible. It's really terrible. <laughs> uh, again, this had nothing to do with the nuclear power plant. No. Am I correct? Yeah. I mean, the, these structures should never have been put there. Yeah. And with those structures there, if the plant was not there, we'd still have this disaster. Of right? course. Yeah. In fact, the plant up the coast, 50 miles up the coast, was shaken more than any other nuclear plant in world history okay. and was safe and housed hundreds of refugees from this okay. tsunami. But you've cleaned up a lot of issues. But then people come to me and they ask me about nuclear energy to try to slow climate change. But they say to me, waste, mm. nuclear waste. Right. Is such a horrible problem. And one person recently said to me, Michael, once they make that waste, it's going to be with us for a million years. And I, I, I just now want to ask a point. Give me your estimate, please, if we run nuclear energy plants. I think we've been running them for 60 years. Yeah. Let's say for 100 years, and we scooped up all that nuclear waste. Yeah. And we have to bury it in the ground, okay? And supposedly a million years, let's say, how much volume of the Earth, the Earth, this planet, <laughs> are we going to take up to store something for a, a million years? How mm -hmm. much? Are we talking about 
the state of California? Are we <laughs> talking about Rhode Island? What are we talking about in terms of volume? Right. Uh, it's a football field. A football so field. So if you did nothing but take all the casks of stored waste uh, nuclear plants today, because the federal government hasn't taken it, so it's all stored at our nuclear plants. If you took all that waste, you could pile it on a football field. If you did nothing to it, just took it from the can canisters it's in. Worldwide? You, we're, no, USA. Oh, USA, okay. For all the history, 60, 70, 60 years of nuclear power, uh, it would be fit on a football field. How high off the ground? It would be three meters high. That's that is 60 the volume. years of running the first, the, what was the largest economy in the world, 20% of its electricity. We dig a, a big hole yeah, in a place right. that is geologically stable. Right. And <clears throat> cover it up with some right. stuff. That's all the space yeah, on Earth that we would be taking up. To for the USA. And then you would multiply it around the world. There's 440 reactors about in the world operating every day, every night. They're not blowing up. They're not doing anything bad to people. Whatever used fuel they have is sitting outside. What we're dealing with with nuclear power is, as you say, high density. Energy density yeah. is very high. Einstein said E equals MC squared. He told Roosevelt what he needed to know to be able to end World War II with 16 or 30 pounds of uranium and plutonium. Yeah, it's amazing. So it's mass times the speed of light squared. And yes. the speed of light is, is a big number big when squared. It's very big times mass. Bigger than big. Yeah. We got a lot of energy right. from a small amount of mass. But I'd right. just like to go over this point again. If we stuck all worldwide, all of the waste in one hole, mm. and it wouldn't be it as, would, as wide as a house. Yeah, and if maybe, it took all the waste from the whole world for the last 60 years, uh, then we would be talking about maybe several, a, a few football fields size. Yeah. Three meters deep. And right? so what? If exactly. it's in the ground for exactly. a million years, so what? Well, a million years is an interesting number. Because each of us, by eating food, particularly bananas, yeah. is loaded with potassium. Our, our cells cannot live without potassium. So we have a lot of potassium throughout our body. Our kidneys regulate it. And the radiation from that potassium in our bodies is about 4,400 beta and gamma emissions per second for life. So we're all radioactive because of what we eat. We breathe carbon-14 from okay. cosmic rays in the atmosphere. So we're all radioactive. And the half-life of potassium-40, which is in our bodies, is 1.2 billion years. So we will always be radioactive, okay. as will all animal life that eats things oh, that have great. potassium. Wonderful. I have one more question. One, maybe two, if I can do it quickly. Uh, another negative about building nuclear power plants is that they are expensive up front, and maybe governments have to fund them. Mm -hmm. We're talking $10 billion, <clears throat> $15 billion. Well, the Chinese are doing uh, a new full-size nuclear uh, reactor. Uh, every every uh, five years or less for $3 billion. Three the billion, output yeah. of one of those reactors is about a, a, a billion uh, watts, which is a million homes uh, operated by one power source okay. that fits on a maybe 50 by 100 foot lot. So the the whole idea of energy density and nuclear is what gives you the cheapness of the, of the nuclear power because no one charges combustion plants for their CO2 yet. We don't do that. We don't have a C-tax. There's no emission from the nuclear plant. So shouldn't we char give them a credit sure. then? Yeah. Or should we charge the combustion plant? Right. Should we charge the renewable industry for the gas it has to burn? One more quick question, and we only have a few seconds left. Uh, 
Have more people been killed in the last year by airplane ah. crashes than all the so-called nuclear disasters from day one, 60 years? And we have two seconds. It looks like it, yes. It looks yeah. like Unfortunately, more. the FAA is not a good regulator here. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest has been Alex, Dr. Alex Canara. He's from down in Silicon Valley. He has studied nuclear energy for much of his life, as well as renewables and ocean acidifications. I am Michael Killen. Thank you.